Hello, friends, family, and my followers. This is Hike360, and I'm here to give you a new hike this week. Woo! Woo -hoo -hoo! Hey, hey, my friends, my followers, my family, it's Hike360 here. I'm here to give you a new hike this week. I'm at Deer Grove in Palatine, Illinois. We're here to do 5.5 miles on a loop trail. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started, so come on over. Uh, the book starts with the Cook County section of hikes, and Deer Grove is number three, and then after this, we're gonna hit number two, and we will be camping at Chano Lakes tonight, over by Fox River, and. And I guess this is a big spot for bike riders to come. In fact, our the author of the hiking book we follow mentioned that there's been a lot of scrutiny here from illegal uh, bikers that are just sort of biking off trail and off path. And well, they need some fat tire bikes then. Fat tire bikes is a good solution. Uh, it's a good solution because if you don't know your fat tire bike, the pounds per square inch that the tire uh, is is inflated to is a very low number and a very low impact. Low impact. And then I'll be quiet in a second so you can hear what I'm hearing. Some sort of croaking or I think it's I think they're toads, frogs, but maybe they're insects. But let's let's take a listen pretty early for the insects. This last year has really opened my ears to the soundscape. We've, we've talked about the coyotes and the mm. herons making the pterodactyl noise. Um, I think the frog is just another layer to that. In a couple months we'll have the cicada layer. Yeah, that'll be <laughs> that, the won't, that will not be hard to hear. <laughs> yeah, almighty layer. Yeah, great. Subscribe to us and then also comment. Let's start a discussion. Yeah. Um. So at first I was going to talk about we just you know just came from a very quiet listening to the frogs environment. Yet people passed us and they were listening to a radio as they walked. And I thought you know it's an interesting. I think we probably talked about radios last summer. Yeah, I remember talking about it uh, in the Des Plaines River hike of Lake County. Yeah. Um, and, and is that is that obtrusive or not? Is that off-putting to other hikers or inconsiderate? So I'll tell you. For me, it's it doesn't bother me. If people are walking on a hiking trail in nature and they've brought a radio along, or they've brought speakers along, and they're playing music, they're blasting music. That doesn't bother me. Does All that right. bother you? If they were blasting music, yes. I, um, for the most part, yeah, you know, I'm not here to listen to music. Oh, oh, oh. deer. Bunch of deer right here. Aww. See, this is what I'm here for. I'm here for the walk and the deer. I want to have nature and wildlife encounters yeah um if i wanted the radio i'd be in the car but that's my take right and clearly you know we for the most part we're gonna meet somebody we're walking past so the radio is going to be a distraction for a teeny bit not for a very long time right and that's the that's the thing that i'm thinking about right now is this preserve is a great example of being able to hold both so they walked by with their radio on, and we got to experience the deer. And the frogs. And the frogs. So it's not like one is causing the other to disappear. Um, so the topic which turned on the camera was the camera. Open for discussion. Love to hear your comments. Please comment. Let us know what you think. The, the question is, is us filming, you know, if somebody walks by while we're filming, is that discourteous to the other person should we turn off kind of when we see them so we don't even get put them in the situation where they may or may not be um okay with it so or just my, continue filming and let people walk by or hide behind a tree or whatever it is they're gonna do 
So I'm hearing that you have been taking a proactive stance on that. So you turn the camera off before it gets anybody on film because I you try to, yes. Yeah. You feel like that they would be bothered and right. And we have someone walking. Oh yeah. I think that well, let's walk while we we will. See, yeah. see, this is me. This is this is the problem that we're encountering, and, and we're trying to figure it out because there's we don't know. Do we continue to record if we're passing someone on the trail? Are our people hiking part of the landscape? What? Are people hiking part of the landscape? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, one okay, way to think okay. of it is is if we cut out the people or never show people, that's that's somewhat artificial because there are always people. Yeah. Well, and so I was going to say, so we can take that the proactive stance and cut it short and, and protect their privacy, uh, or if we that's, can... If that's a concern of theirs, which well, we're making the assumption that it is. Right, so, or which do we continue... clearly to, more of my generation issue than yours. <laughs> so do we continue to record, get them on camera, and then if, if you as a person are really bothered by the invasion of privacy, I would... I would have the hopes that that you come up to me and say, "Hey, I don't want to be on camera. It looks like you're recording." You know, I put the responsibility on the passerby to voice their concerns. Cuz we are in a public place and we are allowed to record this. And so if another person is in this pub sharing this public place, where do the lines, you know, where does the courtesy uh, courtesy lie? Um, and I just, I believe that it should be up to the other person to make, make a statement that they don't want to be recorded. If they feel that strongly about it. And obviously like we're not we could make the statement with people passing by with radio saying, turn it down. Yeah. Which I wouldn't do because I know that they're passing by. If we're hanging out at a, a, a big vantage point or something, and it's really bothering me and taking away from my experience at that place and they're not moving and I'm not moving, yeah, I might, I might be inclined to say, please turn it down. Just like I feel like if I'm walking by and someone's recording a video, I'm not gonna be inclined to say, please don't record me if we're just passing by. Yeah. Now, now if we're recording at a vantage point, uh, and someone's record, you know, and getting me on film for, a minute or several minutes or a long period of time, I may be inclined to say, please stop. But again, it, I feel like it, it's on me to say, hey, I don't like this. All right, so I'm gonna throw an exception out there, which is kids. Kids don't really have the wherewithal to make it. And, and really, you know, it, that, that is certainly more up to us to be proactive and not have, you know, video of kids. So I guess my thoughts are, and again, please comment below if you think there's any, you know, if you want to voice your opinion on the matter, uh, comment below, put a, put a timestamp so we know what part of this conversation you're responding to. Well, that's a smart idea. Uh, so children and kids, if the kids are with their parents, I think their responsibility, responsibility falls on their parents to say, I don't want my child recorded. If the child's alone, if it's like a teenager or a preteen or something, and they're alone, no parents, I think they're not considered in that moment to be not allowed to be on film. What does that mean in, in not double negative language? So like, I think it would be okay to get them passing by on, on film. So as we don't have to stop our own experience to be courteous to them or something along those lines. Okay. Well, I'm glad we're throwing it out here because this is definitely an area where I think we agree to disagree. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would feel very strong. I do feel very strongly about it. Like, I don't like imposing my will on others in the first place. Um, but I definitely don't think it's okay to be doing that. Uh, to people that don't have the ability to stand up for themselves or, or shouldn't have to in the case of kids. What would you draw that line at the typical like 18 years old? I would draw it on anything that I would feel that, that I would have an internal 
you know like they look weirdness too about young to be yeah i mean if they're 20 and they look like they're 16 i'm still gonna be like well yeah uh, well let's you know give it the benefit of the doubt as possible the 20 like no don't just yeah 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 and and that's a good that's a good thing to controversy to throw in but bringing it back generally speaking if we're on the move i don't feel inclined to stop my my video my experience in public in nature for the potential upsetness of another person all right looking forward to hearing from you yeah we're good oh, this is super cool hey I'm glad the weather is warming up a teeny bit, but this is the last cold day of the year. Hopefully. It does always snow in April, which may be tonight. What day is it today? April Fool's. April Fool's Day. It is a nice high pressure zone, cloudless blue sky. Ooh, the sun is nice. What do we have here, my son? Well, I'm glad you asked, and maybe you can answer your own question because Ask I forgot. <laughs> we uh, got our classic homemade bread made by, made by yours truly, my dad. <laughs> uh, last night, actually. This is very fresh. Very fresh bread. Sunflower butter. Sunflower butter. And? What's the jelly of the week? Gooseberry. We got the gooseberry again. Okay, winner, winner, gooseberry. <laughs> what is a gooseberry? I went over this. I forgot. It's a yellow berry. Okay. And that's about as much as I know. <laughs> I've had it before from Jerry's supermarket. The gooseberries. Yeah. They taste weird. They taste. They taste good, but I would not get them on the regular. We picked a spot where you could hear frogs. That's our new thing. It's nice that they came back. They quieted down when we first walked by. You're right. Now we fit into nature. We're just big, ugly deer as far as the frogs are concerned. Do you think the deer think that we're small, ugly frogs? Or big coyotes. Mm, big, ugly coyotes. Gotta get the ugly part in there. Yeah, yeah I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> not possible. That would be one of the craziest nature fights ever to take place. A bear versus a horse. A bear versus a horse. <laughs> Well, I would like to see had, what the happens. The Simpsons had like a shark versus an elephant or something <laughs> stupid like that, or a crocodile versus an elephant. This, uh, the nature thing that we follow on Instagram, that is just crazy nuts. Yeah, we follow a page on Instagram, it's called The Dark Side of Nature, and it posts like animal fights and just like gruesome nature encounters. Like, for example, one was like a deer trying to jump across a road and it just face planted, broke its neck, and died. Crocodiles tend to win unless it's against a, a lion for some reason, like lions and leopards. <clears throat> right. We've seen a lot of videos of them going after and winning a fight with a croc. Yeah, I guess the leopard just and jaguars just know where in their necks in the crocodile's necks that they can... That's a dangerous prey. You know, yeah. you're, you're, you're going to win, <laughs> you're gonna win or you're going to lose. Like, I don't... <laughs> what are we talking about? Well, first of all, we are at a pretty nice visual point, which I think is the southern... I think this is Dundee here in the Northwest Highway, so southwestern corner. Yeah, that sounds right. Um, and we've had a nice walk. It's obviously, this is a dirt path. I've seen horse... Uh, Dropping? Horse prints, not droppings, but prints. And I brought up the question, like, this is a five plus mile hike in the forest. 
How was the hike? Pretty good. It's relaxing. Again, not a lot of history here, not a lot of things to be like looking out for, but it's a pretty well marked trail. It's a pretty simple trail. So we just kind of cruised and enjoyed ourselves. And... We did uh, see two separate groups of deer. Yeah, Deer Grove lives up to its name. That's right. Uh, hey, hey guys. So we're coming up to the finish line here. It looks like we're going to have hiked six and a half miles. Oop, I'm still on maps. And just under two and a half hours. So Deer Grove Forest Preserve definitely holds up to its name. We passed like three different groups of deer. Yeah, we just passed one now. So from the last video where we said there are two groups, we added a third. It's a third. So lots of deer here and they're healthy looking and they're grazing. Uh, lots of frogs too. This is a place to come to if you want to experience the wildlife. We got the frogs, we saw the, po the dead possum, the deers, uh, and the birds. The birds are coming back. We didn't mention the dead opossum. Well, that's because it's new. <laughs> so, you want to see living animals? Of course, animals? it could have been, been alive. We don't know. Yeah, it's an opossum. <laughs> oh, yeah, because they feign death. Right. Feign death, yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, really good hike. We had a lot of great conversations today. Definitely check out the other videos in the playlist. Uh, we have we have many questions that we talked about and discussions that we wanted to open. So we want to hear your thoughts. So please find those videos and comment your thoughts below. We are finishing up, we're wrapping it up and we're going to go hit another hike. So uh, I will keep your eyes out because we're going to bring you more content. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe this video. Uh, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you on the next hike. Peace.